All right, let's look at number six. So for design reasons, you do not want to use shear walls in the building because you need larger windows than the shear wall could easily accommodate. So instead, you would probably employ, and then we have a couple different answers, massively hinged columns, braced frames, moment-resisting frames, Virgil frames. Uh, so looking at kind of a diagram of a sort of 3D frame happening here, the, the, the typical, uh, you would have uh, uh, shear walls, um, and those shear walls would be put in sort of logical locations. And the reason for that is if we don't have any shear walls in that big mix of, of uh, framing members, and we get one of these uh, forces pushing against it, uh, there's nothing, there's no diagonal forces, so it just pushes it over. It becomes, goes from being a square to being uh, a rhombus, right? It, it uh, makes it a parallelogram. Uh, and so if you had a, a force against the, one of these side walls, wind force or uh, shaking force of some kind, uh, it would just sort of knock this thing over. So the typical way that this gets done is you end up building uh, these shear walls in very specific locations, uh, which are big solid mass uh, of walls, often concrete or block, reinforced block or uh, something along those lines. And I would have, uh, I, I wouldn't just put one in, I would probably try to balance it so that the shear going in that direction um, as the wind is coming up uh, this way, it's stopping this force from knocking this thing over. I don't need to have it everywhere, I just need to have enough there that the rest of the, uh, of the frame can just sort of lean against that and it's, it's gonna keep it stiff. Uh, I'm also probably gonna want to have it be balanced in the floor plan so that I don't have a torsion starting to happen where it's stiffer on one side of the building than it is on the other. So if I have this one, I probably have another one on this other side. But equally, uh, I also need to worry about going this way. So I'd probably have another uh, shear going the opposite direction in order to, to stiffen the building in that way. And again, it would, I would try to do it in a balanced way. So I have equal uh, kind of around the center of gravity of the, of the structure. Uh, it's sort of uh, even and, and symmetrical. Uh, and if I have that situation, so let's say I've got them uh, here as well, like I said, for kind of some symmetry purposes, well, clearly that's gonna make it really hard to put uh, a window uh, right into that spot. Now, I can put a window into a shear wall, I just can't put a big window into a shear wall. So the question is, all right, what if I, for design reasons, really want to have those big windows? What are my various choices? So. Uh, the shear wall kind of is out because we just said we can't fit uh, great big windows in there easily. Uh, so what are my other choices? Well, I could use uh, what's uh, referred to uh, as a braced frame. So I could use that. That's actually a pretty good answer. Uh, and in that situation, I might be thinking of big diagonals. Uh, it could be like that. It could be... Oops. Um, Sorry, you wanna get rid of it? Okay, one more. All right, there we go. Uh, or it could be uh, that you, know, you do them as smaller ones that all stack up. Uh, and I would do that in a few of the bays. Uh, and those uh, um, braced frames are actually pretty useful uh, and they can uh, do all kinds of great things. You might be thinking of the uh, Hancock Building uh, in Chicago, uh, or maybe you might be thinking of the Pompidou Center in Paris. The Pompidou Center in Paris, because they were trying to uh, show up, uh, make it, like really make it sort of show all the structure, they actually have those brace frames in every bay. Uh, and that's actually not necessary. Uh, you only need it in probably about 20% of the bays, roughly. Uh, but they did it all over the place just for the sort of fun of it. Um, but you only really need it in some. But you know, if we're really kind of being serious about putting big windows in, uh, this is also kind of problematic, right? I can't really easily fit a big window with that big diagonal steel member uh, running through that, that space. So yeah, it sort of answers the thing, but it specifically talks about big windows. And while I don't have any problem personally with having a window with structural members going by, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Eh, that's not really what it's talking about. That's too designy for this, uh, this kind of conversation. 
so then, all right, how do we do it without uh, putting that in there? And then the obvious answer here is uh, with moment resisting frames. So what that's saying is instead of these, all of these points, like this point right there, being considered a hinge point, um, instead, of, uh, instead of that kind of uh, connection, very simple bolted connection that uh, can actually provide quite a bit of movement in there, a moment resisting frame is saying, I'm essentially welding all of these connections and I'm making those connections uh, so that they are not hinging, they are not uh, uh, turning, and it's making the actual frame, making it, that's the thing, the, those connections where the beams and columns and girders all come together is what's gonna stop uh, this force from pushing that frame over, and it's gonna do it in such a way that I can still get a great big window right in that spot. Uh, so that kind of frame uh, is the, the moment resisting frame is definitely the sort of answer that they would be looking for. Uh, typically that would be a welded frame, uh, though you can actually do it by bolts, but when you get into the details of how you do it with bolts, it takes a whole lot of bolts. Uh, and so it's actually usually easier just to, to weld it because it's hard to fit all those bolts in there because you're trying to make a very, very stiff connection so that it just can't uh, sort of tilt over in that same way. Uh, massively hinged um, is just something I made up, uh, so that's definitely not it. Uh, the answer would be moment resisting. And Virendil, um, this is one of my favorite words that shows up on the exam occasionally, uh, and so I bring it up a lot because it's something that you probably haven't dealt with. Um, a Virendil is a truss type, and it's a fake truss type. It's a truss that uh, uses moment uh, resisting uh, frames, so it's instead of having any diagonals in it, it just uses those same moment frames at all those points, and therefore it kind of acts like a bridge uh, truss, but it's not, it's, it's called truss, but it's not actually a truss because it doesn't have the diagonal forces in it, but it has this weird name, and again, that's one of those things, there's certain words that show up over and over again because they're sort of a, they're a known thing, like a mat foundation, the Virendil truss, the, a whole bunch of those kinds of ideas. And so when you see those in guidebooks or in these kinds of lectures, uh, like make sure you sort of catch on to those because the reason, there are reasons that people are, are talking about those and that's because they get used a lot in these kinds of discussions. Mm -hmm.